Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. First up, reversible reactions and equilibrium. In some reactions, the reactants are completely converted to products and then the reaction is just over. These are called irreversible reactions. On the other hand, some reactions can go backward, meaning the products can turn back into the original reactants. These are reversible reactions. A reversible reaction is one where the products of the reaction can react with each other to form the original reactants. In a reversible reaction, the reaction can proceed in both directions and this is shown by this symbol. So if a chemical reaction has this symbol instead of the normal arrow, then we know it's a reversible reaction and it can go forward or backward. What is equilibrium? Equilibrium refers to a state where the forward and reverse reactions in a reversible reaction occur at the same rate. In simpler terms, it's like a balance point where the concentrations of reactants and products remain constant over time. So a reversible reaction in a closed system is at equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction and the concentration of reactants and products are no longer changing. Let's explore the effects of changing conditions on reversible reactions. What are hydrated compounds? Hydrated compounds are substances that have water molecules trapped within their structure. What are anhydrous compounds? Anhydrous compounds are substances that do not contain water molecules within their structure. Both copper 2 sulfate and cobalt 2 chloride can exist in both hydrated and anhydrous forms. That means they can have water molecules in them, making them hydrated, or they can be without water, which makes them anhydrous. First, let's take a look at the effect of heat on hydrated compounds. Heating hydrated compounds makes them lose their water molecules and become anhydrous. Hydrated copper 2 sulfate is a blue crystal salt. When heat is added to it, it loses its water molecules and becomes anhydrous. It changes color from blue to white. Now let's describe how the addition of water to anhydrous compounds can change the direction of a reversible reaction. Adding water to anhydrous compounds can cause them to regain their water molecules and revert to their hydrated form. The above change is reversible, so when the water is added to anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, it can revert back to its blue hydrated form. Cobalt 2 chloride is another example of a salt that can clearly show a color change when switching between its hydrated and anhydrous forms. Cobalt 2 chloride is a salt that is pink in its hydrated form. Heating it makes it lose its water molecules and it becomes anhydrous, changing color from pink to blue. 
when water is added to anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride, it can revert back to its pink hydrated form. The equilibrium position shows how much of each substance is present when a reaction is balanced. For a reversible reaction, the position of equilibrium changes due to some adjusting factors. This means the balance between reactants and products changes. These factors affect the position of equilibrium. Changing temperature, changing pressure and changing concentration. When a reversible reaction is at equilibrium and then these external factors are introduced, the reaction system will respond by trying to do the opposite to counteract the change and keep everything balanced. That is restore equilibrium. If it moves right, more products are made and reactants decrease. If it moves left, more reactants are present and products decrease. Changing temperature. In a reversible reaction, one reaction releases heat that is exothermic while the other absorbs heat that is endothermic. Raising the temperature shifts the equilibrium toward the endothermic reaction to absorb heat while lowering the temperature shifts it towards the exothermic reaction to release heat. Remember, these happen to oppose the change. If the forward reaction is endothermic, raising the temperature will cause the system to favour the forward endothermic reaction to absorb the excess heat, thereby shifting the equilibrium towards the endothermic reaction. Similarly, if the forward reaction is endothermic, lowering the temperature will make the system favour the backward exothermic reaction to release more heat, shifting the equilibrium towards the exothermic reaction. Changing pressure this factor applies only in reactions with gases. We have to look at the number of moles in the reaction. Increasing the pressure causes the equilibrium position to shift towards the side that has fewer gas molecules. This is because the system is trying to reduce the pressure by preferring the reaction that produces fewer gas particles in order to counteract the pressure increase. Remember, fewer particles mean lower pressure. Let's consider the reaction of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas to produce methane gas and water vapour. In this reaction, on the reactant side, we have 1 mole of carbon monoxide gas and 3 moles of hydrogen gas, totaling 4 moles of gas. On the product side, we have 1 mole of methane gas and 1 mole of H2O gas, totaling 2 moles of gas. Now, let's consider the effect of increasing the pressure. There are more gas molecules on the reactant side than the product side. So, the equilibrium position will shift to the right towards the side with fewer gas molecules, the product side, in order to reduce the pressure. Alternatively, if the pressure is decreased, the equilibrium position will shift towards the side with more gas molecules, which is the reactant side, towards the left. This shift occurs to increase the pressure by favouring the reaction that involves more gas molecules. Changing the pressure only matters if there are a different number of gas molecules on each side of the reaction. If both sides have the same number of gas molecules, 
pressure changes won't affect the equilibrium position. Changing the concentration of reactants will move the equilibrium position to do the opposite of the change. When we increase the concentration of reactants, the equilibrium position shifts towards the products in order to balance it, resulting in an increase in the amount of products formed. Likewise, if we reduce the concentration of reactants, the equilibrium shifts towards the reactants, resulting in a decrease in the amount of products formed. If there is too much of a product, the reaction decreases its amount to balance the reaction. Conversely, if there is not enough product, the reaction produces more. Very important, using a catalyst will not affect the position of equilibrium. This means that adding a catalyst won't make the reaction produce more products or more reactants when it reaches its balance point. But they speed up reactions. They only increase the rate of reaction. They help the reaction reach equilibrium faster by increasing the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions. That concludes part 3 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!